What is up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Internet Famous. I am your host, Devilor, and, uh, well, fingers crossed, we have a show lined up tonight. Knock on wood, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but first, joining me as always is my co-host, a man who I would say is easily uh, one of the top three hosts on this episode of Internet Famous. Ladies and gentlemen, it's AKA Mike B. That's pretty good. I'm up there, dude. Yeah. I'm up there. Yeah, that's great. Rising, yeah, rising to the top. Yeah. Good. I'll take it. Hey, third place, man. It's bronze medal. <laughs> I'll take it, man. Everyone's a winner except for people who aren't winners. Uh, and joining us tonight, uh, this week's special guest, uh, well known in the WoW community, but also I would easily say the number one bagel themed streamer on Twitch. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. It's Sloot. How's it going, man? Pretty good, man. What's up? Stuff. Podcast. <laughs> So on, yeah. <laughs> so, so my top three too, or you? I would you say easily top three. Nice, yeah. nice. I would say probably top we're two. Good, we're on a good path here. I like it. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Dang. 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 So, uh, salute. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, dude. Um, why don't we take a quick second and introduce you to all three people that don't know who you are, who are here right now? Hi. Hello. I don't really know where I'm going with this. There's only two people watching. This makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> what I was I was counting Mike in that list. Oh no, yeah, I was, I was I was not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so so you uh, I know you through WoW, obviously. Um, we've done some uh, some casting together in the past, doing some of the uh, the dungeon race stuff. That was fun ages ago, ages ago. Um, that, that was my debut, actually. Yeah. The first, you. the first dungeon. What was it? actually like the first like real serious dungeon? It was, cast it was the Tespa. Yeah. yeah, those were good times. Uh, and now you also are a Twitch streamer. And before then as well, you were a Twitch streamer. And for some time, yeah, that's, that, that one's been going for a while. <laughs> that one's about six years now. Josh, yeah, but you know. Um. Okay. Fine. We're moving on from that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a quick reminder before we continue, everyone in the chat room, uh, so at the end of the show, we will be taking suggestions from chat for what we should name this episode, and I'm expecting good things, because I know we've got a bunch of Sloot viewers in the chat right now, so um, you guys are going to have to come up with a good good name for the episode at the end good of it. Good wholesome name. Good wholesome name. That, oh, they've been great at that so far. That, that, won't get, <laughs> that won't get Mike banned from YouTube for... Uh, <laughs> For putting it up there. Um, but anyway, so the, the first thing I really want to talk about this week is Far Cry 5. Because that has been blowing up lately. Like, Slute, I know you were literally just playing it before you came yeah. over here. <laughs> I know. In fact, we were at the last mission of the game. The big <laughs> finale. And then we have to stop because I'm here now. Rip. <laughs> Rip. Ruined. See, that just warms my heart to know that. I managed to ruin some dreams today. I managed to. It's true. I feel I like I really made a difference. I feel like you do this every day in your job. It's true, but that's, you're crushing, that's you're actually crushing, true. Crushing souls like left <laughs> and right. It's just part of the description. It's rarely that I get to directly speak to the dreams that I have just ruined, though. <laughs> <laughs> Former dreamer. Yeah. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Far Cry, it's like, it's absolutely blown up, which is, uh, especially on Twitch, like it was, um, I was just looking at, at Twitch just before we started the show, and it was the, it was number three on Twitch, below the obvious, yeah. like, Fortnite and League of Legends that are just always up there, beating out PUBG at the moment. It's unusual yeah, for, it yeah, it's unusual for a story-driven game to be that high on the Twitch rankings for more than, like, a day, and it's been, like, what, two or three days now that it's been up there? It's been a little while. Yeah. What? Yeah, it came out on Tuesday. Yeah, and and, it, and it's been uh, early access stream for like three days prior to that. Mm -hmm. so. so, so yeah, what is it about this? I haven't actually played it yet. I've watched a bunch of streams for it. <gasps> yeah, I know. It's literally <laughs> yeah. it's like every night I've been like it's one a.m. 
do I buy and play Far Cry tonight see, or see, do I get I, sleep? <laughs> and I knew I knew you hadn't played it. And I saw you put it at the top of the list. I was like, I haven't played it. Josh hasn't played it. Like, let's put it at the top of the list. It's perfect. I'm sorry. Ah, no, this is why I'm here. <laughs> My <laughs> please, brothers, please. I come bearing the good word of Far Cry. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, what? Uh, so yeah, what is it about this game that's I, making it so like, I guess, watchable? I guess on Twitch as well as just it's fun. I mean, it's it's a good game overall, you know. So it's got that going. It's got the usual check mark for that. I think, I think there's two things. One is it's just minute to minute, nonstop Murica memes. <laughs> that, like the the game is just literally K Kona. So anything you do in the game, it's just loved by chat because it's immediately memed as America. But the the game knows that and they they went overboard with things, you know, like banjo music, good all American music, you know, muscle cars, uh, eagles flying everywhere at the screen, you know, people yelling and like hick accents and it's just they they went to the extreme with memes. I would say the second thing is that it has co op. Mm. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that kind of run around together and then, you know, they're poo heads i don't know if it's pg 13 stream but they're poo no, heads together it. no no please keep it, together. keep it keep it rated g i like this this is good oh, they're poo heads <laughs> together uh, I, want, I really want sloot to be the only one on the stream that's worried about swearing <laughs> um i mean you never know right yeah, yeah. Uh, so so yeah i think a lot of it's co-op and just it's just just ridiculous stuff happens it's just the kind of game where you jump out of a helicopter with a parachute you know shotgunning down people and running over animals in your car accidentally accidentally and, you know <laughs> just all that kind of stuff so it's just it just makes for a funny time fun mm -hmm. time overall yeah so like I'd, I'd watch like i said i watched a bunch of it but i think i i've like managed to only like tune into people when they're in the middle of like I need to farm skins or something like that so far. So I've just been like, okay, so this looks like a fun open world game. You're doing some crafting. You're doing some talking to vendors and so on. Um, but the last Far Cry game that I played was Blood Dragon. And that was just a meme through and through. Like that was basically an interactive meme. And it was hilarious oh, for it. Like it was really I fun. Forgot, I forgot that was a fucking Far yeah. Cry game. Like I was like, I didn't really play Five any years. like Far Cry 1. And it's like, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I did play yeah, yeah. all the way through Blood Dragon. Damn, but, I totally forgot. Fuck, I love that game. <laughs> it's, it's weird that's not what you see because crafting and everything in the game is, is super minimal. Like, it's just, mm -hmm. you barely do it. Farming and crafting and stuff. It's mostly just questing and Kikona shooting. Okay. Maybe I'm just bad at recognizing what's going on then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a shitty viewer. That's, a that's what do. this comes down to. I'm bad at God, watching so hard Twitch. Uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, you mentioned the co-op content. I will actually watch Shizzle doing that a little bit um, as well because he was he was going through co-op, and that's a really interesting angle I think for a game like Far Cry because normally, like, so I think it it makes a ton of sense for a game like Far Cry to try doing something like that because normally in open world games they tend to be super like um, uh, super story focused and not really willing to like play around with it too much. So like you'll have yeah. like a like a Tomb Raider. If you had co-op Tomb Raider, this doesn't make any sense at all. Or co-op mm -hmm. Uncharted doesn't really make much sense either. But something like Far Cry, you can just have someone drop in and be like, "Lol, I'm here now with my helicopter." Bah! I think <laughs> that's, that's the that's sound. How people talk. You can actually sound. have up to you can actually have up to six co-op in it. Oh like wow! Yeah, I just found that out today. I thought it was only like one on one, but um, yeah, that's all I thought too. Apparently, I think the gripe with it is that apparently only the host will get like story and achievement progression towards the story, the main mm. story. So I think co-op mode is mostly more about either, well, helping someone with that um, or just kind of being shitheads together, you know, and doing side quests and just, which have, is always fun a good time, which is fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is interesting. I mean, imagine, imagine having had co-op in like Witcher three, because it's, it's pretty similar in that sense. Obviously, a lot smaller, you know, different style of game, but it's the same kind of open world concept. You go around, tons of side quests to do. There's a main storyline, mm -hmm. etc. So, while I'm being bad yeah. at playing video games, I've started Witcher Three like seven times, and I oh, it's one of yeah, those I games. I thought you said I, I just started it. Now I was like, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. I bought it when it first came out, and I played it for like two hours, and then I, for whatever reason, like wandered off from it. 
And then like three or four times since then, I've come back and started it and played it for like two hours. And then for whatever reason, <laughs> wandered off from it. And I keep hearing yeah, that my, it's super good. And I'm like, fuck, I need to play this game. My horrible confession is I actually never finished it, mm. let alone play the two DLCs um, because I'm a 100% gamer kind of guy. So to pump two hours, 200 hours into a game, mm. who would ever spend that many hours on one video game ever? No one, ever. no one in their right mind would ever spend. No one in this world of earth would ever <laughs> play this game that much. That would, that would, that would be like, that would be a hell of a craft to spend that much right, time God. on a video the game. game. would need to be out for at least 13 years for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So anyway, Far Cry. <laughs> the other thing that I thought was interesting <laughs> about this, um, just from a like a philosophical perspective more than anything else, is the uh, the arcade mode that it has. I didn't even know it had this until earlier today when I was desperately scrolling through Polygon trying to find topics for the show. But <laughs> it actually has like a full on arcade mode where you can like um, you can like make your own game modes in it. Um, I've actually got a video here just as soon as YouTube decides to stop sucking, which may never happen. And that's actually going to be another one of our topics today. <laughs> hey, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but... but here, so this is inside Far Cry. And it's also player unknown battlegrounds, like a very small map. Yeah, I saw this. But like, and they're alt tabbing to check their audio. There we go. So someone has actually managed to in the... <laughs> Hey, yeah. Just like PUBG. Just, just like, like my stream. Just like PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so it's it's not quite PUBG, I guess, because it's more like um uh <laughs> it's more like a deathmatch thing where you just drop into it and then you like you get different stuff that you can do. Uh, I I now really wish that they would just add that to PUBG, like take away the auto open your your parachute thing so you could just pray to like that sometimes. That'd be so much better for like people at AFK at the beginning. And there's yeah. like a pile of bodies just laying in one spot. But in the like two days that this game has been out, someone's actually managed to already make a, a sub game mode using the arcade inside yeah. uh inside Far Cry five. And like you look at games like uh, uh, Trials Evolution was a game that way outlived its own content. I was going to say, this is this sounds like a Ubisoft thing. Yeah. It's so, to go and give people just unlimited tools to basically do whatever you want. Like, no, just whatever. If it doesn't work, then it, obviously no one's going to play it. Just let you do whatever you want. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about this. There's a bunch of other stuff that, uh, that they've been able to do as well. Like, um, here, I'll actually pull up another one of them here. They actually also, like completely recreated um dust 2 from counter strike uh inside this thing yeah, let's see uh take a look at this here like this is just it's dust 2 inside counter strike this is from uh um i don't actually see his name on the screen uh this is uh, i'm just finding these uh videos embedded from the polygon article on it if you want to look them up you can go find them on polygon if you but, you know as someone who doesn't watch a lot of csgo if you'd show me like a small clip of this i would say this is this is not csgo yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, it's not no no but okay. i understand what you're saying i agree yeah right yeah. yeah this isn't this is no this is definitely not csgo all right um, this would be CSGO if they actually brought CSGO's graphics into 2018. <laughs> well, well, if you imagine like what we see on the preview, like it's just I, I got this tiny little preview into here. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, I, I would pass this off. In, uh, oh, nice. <laughs> there's, there's a little bit more in the way of no scopes going on than you generally get in CSGO. Also. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's super interesting that they've like they've already been managing to basically recreate other games inside the arcade mode. I don't know. I'm I'm just interested to see what ends up coming out of it. Far Cry is definitely a game I will be picking up here. I I have been after everybody's to, done playing it. After everyone's been done playing it, and then I'll forget to play. <laughs> Don't I just like tell years. you what happens? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I do actually want to play. Save it. yourself the four hundred dollars. I literally like I've been every 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 night this week. I've been like I want to play this game. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna buy this game and I'm gonna play it. And I sit there going, oh, but do I want to get it on PC or PS4? Oh my God, please. You're, you're I like, not allowed to purchase FPS games if they're available for PC on a console. That's true. It is. Oh, it dude, is FPS. That's, that's this guy. Go it on. is FPS. That's true. I do. I don't know. I, there's something like, especially 
since I've been streaming a lot more again lately. There's just something nice for me about having a game that I can just sit on my couch and play and not have to worry about like sitting in my uncomfortable chair. Basically, I just need to get a better mm-hmm. chair. I'll just move your couch in front of your <laughs> <laughs> There isn't space. I mean... Look at this. There's no space. <laughs> you should buy yourself like a really sweet, comfortable armchair and mm. have that at your desk. For yeah, those, yeah. Like a lazy boy. Yeah. <laughs> just like put my feet up and just be like, oh, sorry, get a, guys. Just get a really long boom mic, boom arm. So it's like. You just put the mic in your face <laughs> well that was that was that was the wrong lever i just pulled that was <laughs> oh no <nice. laughs> i was trying to lean back and now I, whatever it the time work. is past the time is past um so yeah moving on another interesting thing the interesting thing that came up this week uh well, i say interesting terrifying thing that came up this week especially if you're a youtuber was this whole like um what they call it uh I guess it's like Barbara's take is the name of like this YouTube series they put out or something where it's like, I don't even know what this thing is. Um, but there's, do you have a clip? I have, I have a clip. I'm is not it sure a clip from the Twitter feed or whatever. The one that where he talks about it. 30 second clip. Uh, I do not. I can get that to you right now. Okay. I'll drop it right here in front of this thing. <laughs> So prepared. Well, there we go. I'm super prepared. I wasn't planning on actually playing a clip of it, but yeah, I think I think seeing seeing him talk about it and the way she reiterated it really kind of like really kind of drives home. Where did you drop uh, it? I put it. It's it's literally right next to the topic. Oh, you like oh. scroll down? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I put it where we never put things. Okay, <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we will. It's a very painful 30 seconds. Yeah. We'll just take a look here real quick. Oh, God. We don't notify By the way, that's my new emote. Subscribers, right? We notify all of your subscribers who have rung the bell, and then your most active subscribers after that. Okay, so we try to notify um, the people who we believe would be most likely to tune in and watch your content. That's right. While it's live. That's right. While not necessarily overwhelming and spamming um, all of your subscribers with these, these notifications. That's right. That makes sense to me. That's what we that's what we see our users want. Okay. Cool. Dude, can I I have I, I need to I need to say one thing in particular, which is Yeah. Sounds good. So next question. <laughs> <laughs> we have to make sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like and then give a little anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was watching YouTube on my shaman the other day. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that um, that's not a good look. That's not a good, especially so. Okay, here's here's the thing for me about this specifically. Um, I kind of compare this to Twitch, and Twitch sort of does the same thing, where you can follow someone on Twitch, and then there's a when you follow them, there's a little thing that pops up that says, "Do you want to get notifications about when they're live?" And you click the thing that says, "Do you want to get noti- that you do want to get notica- notifications?" The flow of that is completely opposite to this though where on twitch if you follow somebody it pops up and it has the thing already checked that says you want notifications and then you can turn it off if you're like no i'm just following this person because i want to be nice i don't actually care about their content or them as a person um, or their career or their growth as a streamer i just clicked Mm -hmm. the button because there was a button there i don't know who Mm -hmm. would do that but Mm -hmm. that's that's an option if that's what you're into Um, (laughs) (laughs) we went to a dark place (laughs) <laughs> um I don't feel safe. YouTube Josh is basically <laughs> And also by the way that was when they added that uh slider in there on Twitch. It was defaulted to on for all of your previous follows. So everybody that you were already following that they were already sending you notifications for, they didn't then go in and turn off all the notifications that you were already getting. Mm-hmm. What YouTube has done instead is say, "You know what? We're spamming you with notifications about these new videos coming in. So we'll just disable all of those." And if you really want the notifications after you subscribe to someone on YouTube, then you click this bell and now you can actually get notified about the content from the person you just subscribed to. Good subscriber perk. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It's basically like making everybody start over. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's what it is. Like if you have, like I have 55,000 on my Twitch channel and I'm sorry, on my YouTube channel. And 
Like, I expected, I thought this whole time that, you know, 55,000 people, sans the ones that specifically went in and said, I do not want to receive emails at all from you, YouTube, uh, would get some kind of notification that I posted a video. And the fact of the matter is, no, they don't. So if you follow a lot of channels, then, you know, you're going to get, uh, the only place you're going to see it is your actual subscription tab, which I know they're trying to get more people to use. Uh, because if you, if you use, uh, uh, if you use YouTube's not their not their apps, but like their uh, I guess we could say like TV portal or whatever, like using Silk through like the Amazon Fire tab or something or whatever, right? Using another device that's maybe not necessarily the the official YouTube app. Uh, they've actually redesigned it recently to to uh, to push forward the uh, or make more present the um your subscriber feed essentially uh it still doesn't default you to that it's still default you to what they fucking want you to watch right which is super <laughs> annoying um but but yeah like now so now it's like okay so if you have x amount of thousands of subscribers well now we're not gonna tell any of them that you post anything unless they come back and check this bell and that sucks especially for somebody who and i'll use myself as an example who has gone from like Hardcore focusing on one game, hardcore focusing on another game, hardcore focusing on another game, right? Uh, like for a number of years. And it's like I rely on those subscriber notifications so that people can see. It's like, okay, this guy is, this guy is still putting out stuff. It may not be what I'm related to, but I, what, I, what I play right now, but I'll check it out or whatever. And now it's like it just stops. And that was it. And so if those people move on from those games, like for the last example, it was like Warframe, right? Uh you know, I, I don't cover it anymore, but I would I still had content coming out that people would have been notified about. And now they get nothing. And so all those people who move on from Warframe never see my shit. <laughs> like that's it's it. It's done. And it's completely ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Yeah, it's um so I can I can kind of see two angles here with this. Sorry, I'm trolling suit in my chat right now. <laughs> 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 apparently it's funny i just wish i could read <laughs> um <laughs> anyway uh so yeah so um yes absolutely it, and it causes problems for all sorts of youtubers as well like um someone was saying uh well i only do two videos a month i'm never going to show up in your algorithm because i spend two weeks to create this one video and i put out this high quality video but because people aren't coming back and seeing my stuff regularly then it's never going to pop up in this feed. And I totally get the angle of, uh, like you said, sort of wanting to push people more towards going to the subscription page and looking and seeing what's on there. Because that's kind of mm -hmm. what a lot of people do with Twitch. Like myself included. I actually, myself, I, I was talking shit a little bit ago, but I actually have notifications turned off for Twitch because the amount of time I get to actually watch Twitch is pretty vague and in between. So I don't really have the ability to go like... Oh crap, uh Sloot is streaming right now. I need to tune into Sloot right now. Instead, it's gonna be like I go to Twitch when I have time to watch Twitch. And oh hey, Sloot is streaming, so I'll I'll, I'll tune in and lurk in his channel. Mm -hmm. Um I totally get that for Twitch. That's kind of a, a an ecosystem that they already built up and got themselves to the point where people actually use it that way. On YouTube, people don't use the subscription page because why would you go there? Because you've been getting emails all this time. So now yeah. it really is, like you say, sort of like starting over and having to reteach people how to use YouTube in order to ever actually see any of your content, which is like, I don't know. There's been this whole like. YouTube seems to be trying really, really hard to get people to use Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I, I can't. I, I'm not huge on YouTube. I never have been. I never really got my YouTube channel rolling huge. Just because it's just I just dump so much time into, you know, Twitch and all that. But from an outsider perspective, I feel like the past months, years, even YouTube's just kind of kept making the wrong move <laughs> and has started spiraling so out of control that everything they do just makes it worse and worse. And they just can't, like, get back to ground zero and recover at this point. Yeah, it's actually uh, no, that's a really good super point. volatile. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, um, like this in itself wouldn't be such a bad thing if they weren't also having all these issues with demonetization and also having all of these issues with, um, like content just not showing up in the first place and having the constant content ID issues over the last however long YouTube has existed. I don't know. It just seems like 
it seems like they're on a downward trend right now and they keep doing things that make it worse rather than anything that get, gets creators really interested in their platform again. I don't know. Maybe they're just they're too rich. They don't care anymore. Especially <sighs> when there's attractive, you know, competitors out there like Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. So, um, Mike, I'm going to throw this question to you because you're more hip with the jam than I am these days in terms of YouTube. Hip with, hip with the jam. Oh, you, shit. Strawberry preserves. I don't know. Something like That's that. Okay, I'll <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're a YouTuber and you're having this problem now, is the response to this really just to like in every video be like, yo, ring that bell or whatever? Like, yeah, we <laughs> joked about it, right? We yeah. totally one of our episodes is actually named like smash that bell or something, right? Yeah. Like, no, nah, man, that's a real thing. I mean, you got you gotta do that. And I didn't I I was like, ah, it's jokes, smash that bell, ha. Hmm. But now after seeing this video, it's like fuck, I'm gonna have to start doing that. I'm gonna have to be that guy who's like, yeah, you know, at the end of every video, like, hey, I mean if you like what you watch, feel free to like, favor, and subscribe, leave a comment below and smash the fucking bell and a long laundry list of shit that I gotta tell you to do. <laughs> fucking bypass his algorithm somehow like that's that's exactly what it's like now and yeah. it's uh and yeah it's just it's it's i i i i agree it's like for the past couple of years it's definitely felt like youtube has made like a bunch of really terrible decisions um and part of it i feel there's like there's a couple sides of it it's like part of it is like they're trying really hard to not get in like i don't know serious legal trouble <laughs> somehow right uh, like whether it be through like content copyright whatever or whether it be with uh, um uh with like you know videos about guns or something like, there's something that came out a couple weeks ago where they're not going to have any videos related to uh how to use guns or something some to that effect like they're, they're i feel like they keep on trying to like take kind of a little little sensor here a little bit of censoring here a little bit of censoring here and pretty much it's gonna be fucking nothing left and that's that's what it feels like they're doing. Meanwhile, they're trying to compete as a streaming platform with, uh, you know, with Mixer, Twitch, uh, Facebook, uh, and and actually, <laughs> this is kind of a positive uh, note here. Um, I hear that their discovery is super good because they want to push the live stream stuff. So they actually push those uh, those notifications that you're going live to everybody. So like that's and they prioritize live stream stuff. So it's like so it's. it's it's like if you if you want if you're an old YouTuber uh, that has like a t tons of subscribers, you a and you're trying to make it on Twitch, you might actually do better on YouTube right now because they're sacrificing everything they've been known to do in order to try to take on these other uh, and stay competitive in the uh, streaming platform market. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I don't know, I I always look at these algorithms and I'm like. There's a reason they're doing this, and it is actually like a usually a positive one for the platform. I know that like everybody hates like Twitter has their new like algorithm thing, the the algorithmic timeline everyone hates. Um, I think Instagram has one now too, and it's like uh, they've actually had one for a while. Facebook has had theirs for a while, and every time a um a social media network or anything like that pulls out an algorithmic timeline, everyone hates it right away. But they they actually do it for a reason. As long as they're pulling the right data and they're using that data correctly it does actually lead to increased engagement with the platform um and I'm, like i know there's lots of people that sub to like crazy number of numbers of people on youtube and then as a result don't actually see videos from half the people that they sub to anyway because they've gotten 500 emails about different uh different videos going up in a given day mm -hmm. and so it's like um but like uh twitter's actually a good example here because i mean we all use twitter and how many times have you seen someone on like complaining about twitter where they're <laughs> like i i can't stand twitter it's way too spammy and you look and they're following 2000 people and you're like yeah. of course it's too spammy <laughs> because you you hit the button too many times so i can understand where youtube is coming here but jesus christ <laughs> like please stop telling creators to not use your platform <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know <sighs> Um, so speaking of platforms to not use, I don't actually know where that was going with this. Don't don't be an old show from G four. Uh, <laughs> I love how quickly Sloot just dismissed that entire topic. Yeah. You were like, "Oh, okay," and then I said, "Don't be an old platform, old show from G 4 and you just went, eh. <sighs> "Back over here to my sprite or whatever." Go back to Far Cry. Yeah, back to Far Cry. <laughs> Yeah, Merc. Uh, but yeah, no, this is actually this is actually kind of um, it's interesting from a 
from a perspective of oh so that happened i guess more than anything else so um if you used to watch g4 ages ago for something other than cops basically yeah before cops it was before cops before cops they had a show called attack of the show um had olivia munn on it had a guy named kevin per prairie prairie dog prairie dog yeah um prairie dogs I, I cannot uh, I cannot comprehend his last name, so I apologize to Kevin Ferrari, Kevin Ferrari, but I I anyway. Um, <coughs> after G four sort of took a shit, they moved their show over to Twitch. Um, they called it the Attack on Twitch. So it wasn't Attack of the Show anymore. It was just the Attack. And lo and behold, like they they've been they've been doing fairly well on Twitch for a while, like surprisingly well on Twitch for a while. Pulling like 4,000 to 6,000 viewers most weeks. Lo and behold, that was because they were view bombing. <laughs> yeah. A lot of prairie dogs. That is a lot of prairie dogs. Popping so, out of their holes there. So they initially, yeah, they had, they had a pretty great kind of revival following, right? Of like several thousand people, however many watching. And then it quickly like tapered off, especially after last year when they partnered with uh, Disney XD. Um, and I guess they kind of started to tailor their content a little bit or maybe curtail their content a little bit. Um, and after that, they started to see a pretty significant decline. But then the numbers plateaued <laughs> suddenly. Um, and turns out that, yeah, they've been view botting the entire time. And this is not speculation. Like the channel's closed. You could go look right now. It's closed. Uh, this is actually Kevin. Kevin Pereira actually said himself. Yeah. Um, that he had done it for the sake of trying to like maintain morale uh, and to try to, you know, basically cause they, he didn't want like the, the people on his team and on the show, I guess to, uh, um, to go and go live to like 30 people or however many people would have actually been uh, in there. The, the best thing about this, uh, how it happened, it was actually a mod that turned him in or that but may not turned him in, uh, well, yeah, pretty much that started this whole thing, <laughs> uh, which, which made me think like if it was a mod that tournament are the mods, the only ones watching, <laughs> like, are there really that many, I, I guess at some point during one of the streams, uh, and it's funny because I feel like we've heard this story a number of times with people that are review biting or like using some kind of aim hack shit, right? It's like they always accidentally show it or something. And it's like, Oh, that's it to the top of Reddit with you. Here's a clip <laughs> with the bot, right. Or their aim yeah. hack, whatever. Uh, and alert live stream fails immediately. That's exactly, yeah, right. <laughs> Got him on speed uh, <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And it was one of his mods, and they, they, I guess they, they, the mods got together, they confronted him in Discord, and that's when he came clean. And so you'll find those screenshots around of him basically saying, apologizing and saying, you know what, like, I'm just going to disappear for a little bit because I tried everything I could. I did this, and it was dumb. Like, he basically, he said it was stupid and everything. And, uh, and you know, reading reading what he wrote about it, it's like, man, like, I, I, I can, I, I, I feel for the guy. It's like he was yeah. on he was on TV back when none of us could get on TV <laughs> you know <laughs> at the at the tail end of when people were still watching TV like he had hit it like at the last moment uh and now the brand is completely dead you know Yeah I almost feel like this is some sort of like weird alternate future past thing YouTube. for game breaker as I mean, well so go ahead. What were you saying? What? No, I I, I said YouTube. Oh yeah, you were yeah. Saying alternate weird, alternate weird YouTube. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's just I don't know. It's just the way it is. Nothing goes on forever. I mean, I I don't yeah. I don't have you know like you know way better than I do on this topic. But I mean, things. It's not with with technology and and entertainment and whatever you want your fingertips so easily these days. It's so easy for something to just go into. I mean, look how we started the show. We were talking about how surprising it is that a game that's invested a ridiculous amount of development time and money lasted beyond 24 hours worth of yeah. entertainment. That's you true. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no, that's a really, really good point. Like, is this even the sort of like, is Internet Famous doomed to go down the same exact? I mean, we're already basically we're getting the numbers post uh Post view botting <laughs> that uh, that the attack was getting. Um, I mean, he has a reach in the bottom of the barrel. If I'm yeah. here, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we had another host lined up. He had to back out. 
No. <laughs> he's, he's playing Far Cry. <laughs> he's playing Far Cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's like, I mean, Bad Omen Prophet, no king rules forever. I mean, it's true. Like, yeah. no, no, yeah, no empire goes on, you know, infinite, right? It's everything ends at some point in time eventually josh you're gonna stop doing streaming shit i'm gonna stop doing streaming shit we're all gonna get old and that's gonna be it right it's gonna happen but we're not we're probably not gonna, gonna be go the guy like who's this. 92 years old barely able to play a video game dies on stream no one notices for 24 Shirley hours Shirley curry's still putting Far out fucking YouTube. 10. Shirley curry's like 80 <laughs> something years old and she makes skyrim videos like every other day like she's still going man like yeah so maybe it's possible uh but no, like to go out like this, though, like yeah. and this is like uh, this brand is uh, this IP uh, is like, what, 10, 12 years old now, 12 years, something like that. 2006, maybe. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's still to afford to go out like this on like they were doing so bad that they cheated to try to maintain rel being relevant, which just further makes them irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I said this is sort of like a weird alternate future for game breaker as well. Like if game breaker had continued on longer, I could totally have seen this being something that certain people at game breaker would have ended up doing. Uh, Oh, you mean the Jessica Negri bouncing boob gifts weren't uh, a sign there that, uh, that was kind of on its last, uh, <laughs> you yeah, know, that, that <laughs> network went in a different right? direction. It went in a different direction. <laughs> I appreciated the, at the very least, the, the path that things went along where it was like, Hey, here's a bunch of cosplayers. And then it was like, hey, here's a bunch of people near video games. Here's a bunch of girls holding controllers. Yeah. Here's a bunch of girls wearing horse masks. And it's like, what does that have to do oh with God, anything anymore? Mask, yes. The horse mask, <laughs> I, that was the that was the view botting. Uh, like, yeah, exactly. Right there. Girls in horse masks on the front page of Game Breaker or whatever. Like, what oh, does God. this have to do with gaming? Like, I mean, I love a good horse mask <laughs> as much as anyone else, but Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, don't uh, don't view bot on Twitch, even if you're a former G4 show. I thought they cranked down on that like two years ago or something. They had this huge policy tech improvement sweep two years, maybe even more than two years where they were just because there was like mad view botting going on and huge community complaints. And ever since then, they just kind of like made it super illegal and i think they actually brought some kind of illegal stuff into it too and mm. you know made it super scary and said they could prevent it now and some suppress it here that excuse me that it's still happening i guess it's technically impossible to fully prevent but um yeah i'm sure yeah, i don't know i actually i actually wonder though like because kevin Pereira is pretty known in the games industry right like so it's like i kind of wonder if someone was like let's wait and see if they they swing back. Like I, I feel like they have, yeah, they have the tools to be able to recognize when this is happening. Much in the same way that you know re servers have security to to see when a DDoS is happening or whatever. You know, like they can see based off of location or something. I'm sure they have some kind of data. Uh, but I also wonder if like if they're like let's let's let it let's just let it happen because it could it could recover. There isn't a bad spot. They got picked up by Disney last year. It could recover. Things will come back around. And it took. It took this incident where the, the the mods are actually the ones that's that came forward and said, "Hey, what's going on?" and forced basically a confession out of him, essentially. Like that's I I because I I can't imagine that for the past year he's been view botting and nobody at Twitch knew. I mean, mm. it's probably maybe I don't know, but still, it seems weird. <laughs> but if anyone gets a pass, is somebody that just got signed by Disney, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I mean. Most of the time when someone's viewbotting, like they'll get to the top of a channel. Well, so part of it, I think, is just the gro the overall growth of Twitch has made viewbotting less lucrative overall, because most of the time you're getting yourself to this top of a the reason that you would viewbot is because you want to get yourself into like the top five, maybe even the top place in a given game. And nowadays, the top 10 games on the front page, the person in the top has like 10,000 viewers. So it's difficult to actually get yourself to that point a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Not always, but a lot of the time. Um, Especially if you go on a stream with 10,000 people and there's like one, one person typing every 20 <laughs> minutes. And you're like, hmm. Yeah. Mm. Everyone's just full screen. They're just full screen. They're just, That's what it is. They're, they're that watch engaged. Watch <laughs> they're on mobile. On mobile. Don't feel it's like that. It's annoying to type. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, they're skydiving right now, guys. Don't this? They, they can't. Oh man, yeah. I don't know. I, I was a little bit surprised that a viewbot was still a thing that existed in the year of our Lord twenty eighteen. Um, speaking of things that exist in the year of our Lord twenty eighteen, Ark is back. Um, again, but this time it's Minecraft. <laughs> So my god. <laughs> my god. It's becoming self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> my god. No, so they came out with Pixar. Mm-hmm. Um and I don't I don't even really think there's anything else I can do to describe this thing other than like let's just look at a video of this because it's literally it's just it's Ark but Minecraft. Even down to the constant level up is available on the top of your screen. Dude. It's Ark, but Minecraft. It looks really fun getting caught on those squares. <laughs> Dude, it happens all the time. And they even have an option to enable uh, this like auto jumping feature. But here's the problem is with the auto jumping feature, it doesn't anticipate you approaching something. And so it waits until you get up against the wall and then jumps you up. So you're like, so you're the same thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still it's still bad. Like. Oh, don't so, worry, it's early access. I'm sure they'll fix that sometime in the next seven years. Yeah. <laughs> this is part of early access is this cube formation. It's actually a hugely 3D game. Super <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's so I, I played it. I, I played it the other day. Um, and yeah, it's it's Arc with a very poorly poorly designed UI. Mm. Um, <laughs> We say that I guess it's not as that though Ark itself. From, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, this is true. This is true. Um, I was actually, I was watching this earlier and I was like, oh, they've improved the UI for this. <laughs> look, look, I mean, just all the overlapping things and then you can't hide chat. And in this window, if somebody talks, it shows up right in the center. Like it blocks everything and you cannot hide it. <laughs> uh, but, so, hang on. Is this, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, as as hip and hop as I am with games these days, is this actually from Ark yeah. or Minecraft, or is this just like it's, it's actually like, it's an from the Dude, this is an actual released game. Yeah, <laughs> by, <laughs> by who games. though? Snail Games. Uh, I mean, it's it's Ark though, right? So it's it's yeah. it is is it is actually Ark uh, at its core with just basically a new skin and yeah. and uh, um, it's not the same exact development team, but it is a licensed Ark spinoff, right? Oh my god. Uh, so I, I played it for a bit. It, 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 it is, it does have a lot of Minecraft. He's punching a fucking tree. Okay. I mean, does it get more Minecraft than that? I mean, that's um, what you do in arc too, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, and the problems that I had was that the official servers were junk. I've heard that the, uh, private servers are fine. Is, is, is fine. And it plays just like local. Uh, when I was playing a local, like the gameplay is pretty good. I mean, like, you just play and you have like this massive and just completely nonsensical, like progression tech tree. Uh, and then you have, you have like a, just a smattering of fucking random mobs from varying levels that are all like right next to each other or wherever you decide to build a house. And suddenly there's like level 118 and a half fucking mobs right there. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, it's, it needs so much work. It's it's here's the thing. It's like it needs so much work to be as good as a game that came out what eight years ago. Yeah. And that's the problem. Like I'd probably play it again, especially on a server that doesn't suck, right? But it's still the at, at best, it's gonna be as good as Minecraft with a few mods. See, the first thing I thought when I when I saw this was oh finally, a version of Arc that has a frame rate. Because yeah, it, it does actually, it's pretty smooth. Ark is like the least optimized game in existence. It is bad, um, especially as soon as you start in- installing like any mods on it. And so I actually saw that Steel Rain was streaming this earlier, and he was streaming it on an RP server, and I was like, "Hmm, this hmm. on an RP server? What is what is that? Is that a mouse? Like, he was streaming <laughs> this game on an RP server? Yeah. Oh my god, I just." <laughs> Why not? You can. Uh, there's people RPing Minecraft right now. I, I guess. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's, it's just like every game with voice. This is gotta make yeah. it RP. Proximity um, voice. Suddenly yeah, so RP that's, mecha. That's, that's like a dinosaur rabbit thing or something. Yeah. 
It's, uh, a it's probably well, male it? big ear ram- rabbit. Can you can you read the l- level? Level twenty five. Level twenty five. Yeah. So that thing will push your shit in right now. That little bunny. That's it. It's done. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, right, right, probably on the other side of a hill is like a level one hundred aggressive mob or something. Uh, and then right behind him is probably like a level five. That will still push your shit in because if you're playing on a, on a server, uh, on a, on a crappy official server, you will fight something forever and it will never die. Like nothing dies on the official servers. <laughs> how do you really feel? <clears throat> oh shit! Yeah, he tamed it. What was that? I said, but how do you really feel? <laughs> oh, I know. I he know. tamed the rabbit and named it Dodo. He's playing local. <laughs> That's been playing single player. Yeah, and also, <sighs> someone in the chat was like, "Is this not a mobile game?" I mean, you can kind of tell from the now he's wearing the rabbit like a hat. Of course he is. Um. You can kind of tell from the interface that they intend for it to, at some point, be a mobile game. I mean, fucking Ark's coming out for mobile somehow. I <clears throat> I bet somehow or another it's going to run smoother on my fucking phone than it does on my <laughs> fucking i7. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. This is, um... Oh, he turned it into a block. That's interesting. This is interesting legitimately i am interested in this i actually bought it earlier because it's it's on sale right now it's like only 12 bucks on steam or something like that did you bought this and you haven't played far cry wait this is on sale it just came out (laughs) yes (laughs) (laughs) look on a stable server it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna be like i said as good as like minecraft with a few mods um but yeah, it, it's it it definitely needs some serious uh some serious love and attention. Yeah, I mean it is early access, so that sentence can just stand on its own, I suppose. It is early access. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm I'm intrigued as someone who kind of likes Ark and kind of likes Minecraft and definitely liked Cube World for the three minutes that i was able to play it um and i I don't know like mike you and i have been sort of hoping for something to scratch that q world itch for what feels like about a decade now at this that's point that's why yeah yeah i'm sure that's why you got into this in the first place yeah i'm well, definitely gonna check it out it, yeah it was it was gifted to me and i was i was thrilled i was like i was mm-hmm. like oh fucking yeah let's let's try it. i was looking for that for, for that q world itch but i mean you know like everything else we've played uh, since then, the the infinite number of voxel base whatever games, uh, nothing quite nothing quite nails it. Yeah, it's and, and, and yeah, it's bizarre that no no game like that has managed to be as good yet as the game that one guy has been slowly working on for like the past two and a half decades. Yeah, as just like in his free time, I swear. So, um, Ted, I guess to catch you up. Basically, there's this game called Cube World that was in early access development before early access was a thing, and we got to play it for like a few hours. And you had to use like weird LAN like hacks. What the fuck was the name of that thing? Uh, the thing that made it made oh, your computer think oh. it was on a LAN with something else. <laughs> I totally forget, but yeah, it was like it makes a tunnel so you could basically just yeah, connect yeah. directly. Uh, um, oh my god, we had to use it for like everything, and I totally forgot what it was called, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It came out. It was janky. It was it was super janky, but it was really really fun. And now every once in a while, the the guy who was working on it, um, he literally he just does it sometimes when he feels like it. He'll go and work on the game just for fun, basically. It's just his little world for Cube World. Yeah, it's not like a real serious like. He's not trying to create a new indie game that's going to come out and take the indie world by storm. It's literally the same. In the same sense that someone might set up some model trains in their basement, this guy's working on this game just slowly over a long period of time so that eventually he can be like, well, that's a cool thing that I made. Anyway, delete and move on with his life or something like that. Um, and so every once in a while he'll tweet about, oh, I added this cool new feature to, feature to Cube World. And we'll look at the tweets and the pain, the, the sheer <laughs> pain just comes through because we can't play it. And There's actually a... Um... 
Uh, I think it's Cube World LS. Cube World. Uh, uh, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, there's actually a Twitter account. It's kind of like, is Half Life 3 out yet? Or is DMX in jail.com, right? It's one of those mm. <laughs> types of sites that basically you could check regularly or a Twitter account that tweets regularly and says, no, there has been an update to Cube World yet. Nice. So, yeah. Um, it is missed. We got time for a little bit more here. So, um, I thought this was interesting from a let's watch the train crash perspective um sea of thieves has actually canceled a feature they were planning on adding to the game um importantly it was a feature that no one wanted so they were planning on right now in sea of thieves if you're fighting stuff and you die you go hang out with the ghost ship for a little while then the door opens and you go back to your ship the ghost ship by the way looks amazing it looks it looks great yeah it, it, yeah it does look cool. Yeah. Um, you go hang out in the ghost ship. You guys have both played it, right? I know mm-hmm. you have played it, Mike. I, I think I saw it. Salute. I think I saw you trying to play it with Timac on like the day it released and it never worked or something. <laughs> I've, I've, I've like very, very minimally dabbled in it, but I mean, I've seen enough streams. And, yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah I'm, I'm in pretty much the same place. <laughs> I, uh, I got conned into buying it at like 4 a.m. with a bunch of drunk friends and they were all just trashed and i was not <laughs> that's the most fun position to be in <laughs> it was that's um, the best time to play a game like this by the way and the only way to really get this game to be somewhat enjoyable yeah like long term enjoyable i guess is playing with your friends yeah and so like the biggest thing that people are complaining about it is that there's not enough features so they were planning on adding this like death tax thing where when you die there was like a death penalty so that that way the idea being that it makes um, surviving out in the world a little bit more important and less of a like, oh, minor annoyance. I got killed. Wait a few minutes, then come right back and continue doing what I was doing. And more of a, oh, shit, we have to, like, be careful and try not to get killed and, and so on. Um, so they announced that they were working on this and they were like, hey, this this great new feature we're going to add to the game. And everyone hated it immediately. They were like, what? No, I don't want to. There's there is one thing to do in this game, and that's collect money so that I can buy hats and shit. Don't take away my <laughs> money every time I die. You're just going to make it. This is just making it slower. And then they were like, oh, it's not active in PvP. And everyone was like, we don't care. <laughs> Please don't add this to the game. So like, all right, fine. We're not going to add it to the game. Um, Which is interesting from two perspectives. One being, okay, cool developer listened to feedback did not implement thing that people didn't want great Mm -hmm. the other end being okay so they were actually working on updates to sea of thieves to add more mechanics and playability to the game but now they've had to cancel one of them that seems bad (laughs) yeah i can't (laughs) i mean the the idea of putting in some kind of death tax is kind of shit uh, they need to find another way to make you want to stay alive for longer, right? Or maybe not want to like scuttle the shit and the ship and then disappear. You know, like it's they need to find another way of doing that. Uh, but right now, the only thing to do in the game is really just run around and be dicks to each other and try to blow up the ship. And if you fail, you get a new ship and you do it again. And that's pretty much it. Like that's and honestly, it's a lot of fun. Like getting these ship battles and everything, it's kind of it's kind of fun. You're not just standing there still and firing cannons. Like you're fucking doing drive-bys. You're trying to drift the entire the entire using the anchor to like like fucking stop and like turn around real quick. You got three dudes trying to raise the thing back. Like it is actually a lot of fun. Uh, and pretty much the only fun. Uh and so like you can't you can't be like, hey, this thing that everybody's doing, you know, going around killing people. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna create some kind of thing that punishes you when you die. Obviously, not necessarily just in PvP, but also everywhere else. Like it's still so when you die in PvP, you get the humiliation of being of being served by a bunch of thirteen year olds on a fucking boat. Uh, and then if you die, uh, in, you know, to PVE, then we're also then we're gonna tax you over there. Like there's just no benefit here. Like just get, give a get a win somewhere in there uh, to to balance it out. This the feature was dumb. They should have just not done that. Yeah, I mean. I completely agree. Adding a death penalty to a game with a lack of content already is a bad idea. But like they they should ideally they should have never started working on this particular thing. It's like they they so basically where I'm going is that it's kind of a two-hit issue, right? And 
not only are they not implementing this thing, but now they've wasted time developing a thing that they could have been spending that time on something else. I don't know. It's just, uh, it's kind of a... Cost them a raid tier. It literally <laughs> cost them a raid tier. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. To, to me, this game, just period, seems like you buy it, you get really drunk with your buddies and are assholes for a night, and then you're like, well, that was fun. <laughs> I'm I'm done. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's just no... I mean, every stream I've tuned into is just like, but you know, there's just if you don't have that premise in mm-hmm. the game, that kind of foundation with friends and and maybe a bit of adult beverage, I, I just I can't. There's no, there's barely any progression in the game. Just like you guys are saying, there's barely anything to do. I mean, it's it's fun, and I feel like the novelty wears off really quickly. And, and yeah, yeah. The only so I don't know. I mean, I agree. Like they. They spent all this time adding a feature that when they could have maybe developed the game to have some more depth to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know how much time they would have spent on implementing a death tax in the game either. Maybe it was something that one of their coders scripted up in an afternoon and they were just like, eh, all right, never mind then. But in a time where they really, really need to be coming out with features, coming out with features they then have to cancel due to them being a bad idea is an even worse thing to end up yeah. doing. So, And it looks bad too. Yeah, mm. for sure. So, um, rip, I guess. Rip Sea of Thieves. <laughs> I know that a lot of people have been canceling the their, uh, their free trial of the, uh, the Xbox Game Pass or whatever it's called. Do it. Do it. I did also, it. Also, can I just say, like, kind of related, but the Xbox Windows app is the worst. Oh, it's so user bad. Interface piece of trash I've ever it's seen so in my bad. life. It, oh my god yeah, right especially because like the microsoft store and the xbox app are they're two different things and so it's like having not really used either one that much at all i was completely lost i was like i got i was like okay well first off whoa i have an xbox app on my computer <laughs> like, <laughs> i was like wow Why? i thought it was yeah no me yeah. too <laughs> why is this here yeah yeah it literally so- it took me about 20 minutes just to find the game to even buy it in the first place and then I, I didn't know that the Game Pass existed. So I did actually spend $60 on Sea of Thieves, a game which I have played for maybe two hours. <laughs> Unlikely hour. to play again. <laughs> Ripped. Was he playing Pixar? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to, after this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy Far Cry right after this. Yes. All right. That's right. Pixar, I'm, Pixar, I'm doing Pixar it. Pixar like, now is going to be twenty dollars divided by zero hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm just never going to play Pixar because instead I'm going to play. My Far God, Cry. that's not even possible. <laughs> 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 the game is so bad that we. Oh <laughs> my goodness! Valid function in there. All <laughs> right. Uh, so that's going to basically wrap us up for the week. But we do need the name of a title, the name of an episode. We need an episode title from the chat room. So, uh, people in the chat, if you would like to recommend what we should call this episode, episode number 10, with the glorious salute as our special guest. Oh, you, you were pointing. I thought you were I doing point, like that. I was, try, I was trying to point, then I realized that my hands got the, the thing, so you can't yeah. really see my hand, so it's just kind of like a... <laughs> <laughs> it looked more like... like what, happened, what happened to your hand? Huh? What happened to your hand? Oh, I think you uh, God, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too, jerk off too into that. Far Cry and, Five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what our uh, suggestions are here. <laughs> America, America. <laughs> it really is K Cone of the video game, isn't it? Dude, I have to play it. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll play it tonight. It'll Literally. do you proud as a fellow American. Fistful of bagels. <laughs> It's not bad. That's not bad. Someone just wanted to say two girls, one salute. That <laughs> I get that impression. Yeah. I may not have told them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I also buy Winrar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it told me that my trial period was over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, so far I think Fistful of Bagels is winning. <laughs> when is this over so I can get back to Marika? Yeah, yeah. 
suits wearing horse masks. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I think uh, it's really weird being on a podcast with you for the first time and literally zero wow discussion. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's so (laughs) weird. Should we, should we mention the MDI? The what? The mythic Uh, dungeon invitational. Should we mention it? We should. Okay. You want. There's an MDI. (laughs) Dude, I'm so out of the loop on it. I'm not I'm not casting it, so I've just been like, all right, other people are writing the announcements and stuff for it, and I'm just like, yeah. I'm so out of the loop. All right. Zero zero wow discussion. discussion. That is a good title. Zero wow discussion. (laughs) I kinda like it. I kinda like like it, it. yeah. All right. We're going with uh we're going with it. We're going with zero wow discussion for our title. All Perfect. right, that is going to wrap us up here for the week. Sloot, thanks so much for coming on, bud. I really, really appreciate it. You got, uh, you have a cat in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, been fantastic. <laughs> wait, do all of us have that a calico? Like, all, I swear, to, is that a thing? Josh, you have yours. I have yeah, mine. Mine's right over there. Oh, mine's mine's. Oh, mine's fat somewhere else. This cat's everywhere. Uh, Sloot, thanks a lot for coming on, dude. Uh, any shout outs you want to make? Any, uh, what you got going on? Uh, no, I mean, man, just thanks for having me. No, no, no shout outs. I don't have any friends and stuff, so. But it's, it's, it's been fantastic, man. It was a lot of fun. It's actually surprisingly very refreshing not talking about WoW on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I have this nice. podcast? <laughs> Uh, Mike B, aka, aka Mike Park B. Park. Yeah, exactly. Mike B, how you doing, dude? I'm what doing good, man. Uh, smash that I mean, bell. Smash, yeah. Fuck, I'm gonna have to s- smash. If you watch us, you do smash the bell. Smash. I don't know where it's at. It's somewhere. Just find it. And <laughs> smash it. Click it. Do something with it. Like, favorite, subscribe, comment below. I, there's more. I think. I'll. I'll but please. <laughs> <laughs> He's desperate. <laughs> and I have been your host, uh, Devilor. If you're watching this on Twitch, you can find me right here. If not, you can find me on Twitch TV slash Devilor. I will be playing Far Cry 5 in the very near future. So um, keep an eye out for that. I might stream it. I might not. I'm not sure yet. This is a decision I've come to very recently. So we'll figure out where things go from there. All right. I guess that's going to wrap us up. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, everybody. We will see you next time.